Hi, over the next few weeks and months I'm going to be testing and reviewing this brand new prototype touring ski from Elan, the Ripstick Tour 88. This is a brand new take on the classic Ripstick free ride and all mountain ski but in a more lightweight design. It shares many of the same characteristics and geometry as its earlier free ride cousin but with a few minor tweaks. The original Ripstick comes in, in widths of 88 such as this up to a powder taste in 116 and lengths of about 148 up to 193 depending on which model you get. Here with the Ripstick Tour at the moment it only comes in a width of 88 with a length of 170, 177 or what I have here the 184. Although I expect when it hits mass production there will be other widths and lengths available. So Ellen claimed that this is the touring ski that we've all been waiting for combining the super lightweight design of an out and out touring ski with the playfulness, power and pop of a free ride ski. So I'm certainly looking forward to putting that to the test. So a bit on the technical specifications of the ski. Firstly, this has a 360 degree sidewall, which is this fluorescent green portion of the ski, which wraps right around the ski from tip to tail. So there's no top sheet overlap. Generally speaking on skis, the longer the length of the sidewall, the stiffer and more precise the ski. So a beginner ski will have little or no sidewall, perhaps only under the foot section of the ski, whereas race skis have full length sidewall. So that means in theory this should carve really nicely on piece, much like a race ski or carving ski. So a bit on the construction. This is made from a laminated wood core, which is reinforced with both carbon and fiberglass. And then finally it has a carbon bridge, which is this raised section in the middle. So this, is this is largely a similar design to the original Ripstick, except for the 360 degree sidewall. I think the, the Ripstick has a SST sidewall. And this raised carbon bridge section in the middle. So the original whipstick, the, set, uh, the, the ski, is basically flush with the top of the sidewall. Finally, this has the same Amphibio camber profile as the original whipstick, as well as several other LM skis. So this is an asymmetrical camber, which means that first thing you need to make sure you have the ski on the right foot when you're skiing. Secondly, the inside edge has a near full length camber, so the active turning edge is pretty much from tip to tail, whereas the outside edge has a slight rocket profile. That results in a longer active edge on the, in, on the inside edge than the outside edge. So when you are carving a turn in parallel, naturally the outside foot is having to go around a longer arc than the inside foot to maintain the same turn radius. So it makes sense really, it's a bit like differential steering in a car. Well, and the final thing to note is this notch at the tip and tail for the attachment of the skins. So the original whipstick doesn't have this, but of course you can still attach a generic skin, kind of basket, basket type attachment over the top. But this is a much more secure and also much more lightweight design, so you can have your own custom made skins for these skis. So as mentioned, these very much fall under the super light category of touring skis. Not quite ultra light as far as a skimo ski would go, but then for a full length ski, Full, full size ski, they're very much a super light ski. The official weight as quoted by Elan is 1.25 kilograms per ski, but that's for a 170 length ski. So here I've got the 184, which as you can possibly ski on the scales, is just under 1.3 kilograms. So still a very light ski. So as, as a comparison, the Elan Ibex 84 Carbon XLT ski, which is their kind of flagship super light touring ski before these, comes in at 1.21 kilograms for a 170 ski. So again, it's very much in the same ballpark as that ski, but a much more playful ski. To compare to a different brand, the Zag Ubak 184 skis, which is the, their touring ski, is 1.4 kilograms. So it's around 100 grams lighter than the Zag Ubak, as an example. And then to give a comparison to my old lightweight touring skis, these Dynafits, This also weighs about just a fraction less than 1.3 kilograms as well. Whereas this is a shorter and much less stiff ski. So you're getting much more ski for a similar weight in the Elan than you are with this Dynafit. Then to put it all in context, what these numbers actually mean, here I've got just a generic kind of all mountain piece ski. A similar width and length. And this weighs in a whopping 1.8 kilograms, slightly more than 1.8 kilograms. 
So imagine by the time you've got bindings and two skis, that's a huge weight difference between the All Mountain Peace ski and an All Mountain Touring ski. So that's the technical side out of the way. So for first impressions, well, without actually riding the ski, there's not much more you can go on other than just looks and feel. So it looks like a very stylish ski in my opinion. I'm loving the lime green sidewalls as well as the classic LM lime green base. It just incidentally happens to match my poles, pure coincidence. And of course, this is a prototype ski, so the actual graphics may well change before it hits mass production, but as it stands at the moment, no complaints with the kind of green into blue design, and then the way that the asymmetrical design matches up from one ski onto the next. Feel, again, quite nice. Very, feels very, feels like you're getting a lot of ski for your money here. It's a very sturdy, stiff, and sleek ski. Definitely doesn't feel cheap and tacky at all. And overall, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. And I'm definitely looking forward to, ski it, to skiing it and testing it further. So, so in future videos, you'll see how it actually rides. But first impressions, all good.